Hey everybody, welcome to The Secret History of Living Inside Your Aquarium. Today we have Cooley Loaches. Uh, we have a male and a female here. Uh, they are an interesting fish. So in this tank, I have had Cooley Loaches. I had four at one point. Gave two to a friend because, uh, you know, you got to share the love with the Cooley Loaches. Now, these guys are going to spaz out if I startle them at all because they love having places to hide. This is stressing them quite a bit, uh, even though their water parameters and everything are fine. I just wanted to give you guys a close-up because in the tank, that's just not going to happen. They are a nocturnal fish. You can see that by their eye there and their latin name actually means uh spiked eye or prickle prickle head um prickle face and you see that they have a little spike right there under to the left and down below their eye now the males and females are pretty much the same when not spawning but I decided to pull them out of the tank right now because these ones were displaying spawning behavior. Now, every with the fish that are in here, they would have gobbled up the eggs. And when they spawn, Cooley Loaches have a lot of eggs, like hundreds to up to a thousand eggs. And apparently, you know, pure protein, they're tasty. So my panda loaches, uh, my shrimp, my guppies... My uh, my uh, Tin Winnie Daniels, they would have all just gobbled that up. Now, I want you to take a look at the substrate here and check this out. So, there are um, various pests in this tank. We have uh, everything from seed shrimp to uh, little, I guess, um, you know, different paramecium's and nematodes. Which is good. I mean, that's fine in a tank. Uh, we also seem to get sometimes the the uh, the dreaded planaria, and they'll make these little burrows. See this? This is a planaria burrow. And the reason I caught the cooley loaches was I I saw that they had buried themselves from all the way over here. You can see the different layers of strata, and they buried themselves and they were eating the the. Uh, the planaria, which was great. But the same night that I was sitting and watching, see, there's a couple of planaria that have been flushed out of their burrow. Last night when I was watching, they also were eating all the itty bitty baby shrimp because they're scavengers. They don't see well. They do have incredible sensory organs. They, they're almost like an electric eel or something, the way they can sense things. Now, they're not an eel. They are a fish, uh, and they have evolved in Indonesia and the Malay Peninsula, but you can kind of see, you see that color uh, different, differential right here along the lateral line? Those are all sensory nodes, and if you zoom in really close, I don't think we'll be able to see them, but there's little teeny dots along the body that uh, that are all sensory organs. And you may be wondering, what the heck are these guys? You know, like, how did they evolve, that sort of thing? Well, in the tropics, they evolved, and they evolved basically living under sandy substrate, under soil, leaf debris, and their eyes, if you take a look, are facing forward with those kind of typical catfish whiskers, barbels, uh, helping them sense, but they're not so big as to get in the way of things. And they can literally, maybe when I put them back in the tank downstairs, I'm switching which tank they're in, you'll be able to see even in gravel, but definitely in aqua soil, they can go from here to burrowed under there in a second. They're incredible at doing that. So they're really fun to watch in that regard. The other regard that they're interesting is if you have a hang off the back. This one's clogged at the moment. Uh, you can see more's coming out the <laughs> the input than the output because uh, of the algae that's grown up in there, uh, probably blocking uh, a spot. But because of that, this solid stream, I also noticed a couple days ago, one had lodged itself up in there. So 
that's just a little uh, beware. And when they get really stressed, so if you're trying to catch them or you're moving hardscape, they'll actually leap out of the water. They're incredibly muscular, their bodies. And uh, they're nocturnal, but if you startle them, they'll do anything to get out of the way and they won't really pay attention to what what's in front of them sometimes, like enough that they'll even hurt themselves. Um, so back here, we've got the female. You see how broad she is? These guys can be as small as two inches full grown, whereas this one, so my finger here from the knuckle joint is five and a half inches. So these are probably four inch Kuli loaches, pro probably close to yeah, probably four and a half inches, which is right pushing it. So I was like, well, what in the heck uh, is up with that? Why are they so big in this tank? And again, it's the shrimp, stupid. Uh, so I've got all these Malua shrimp and baby shrimp around the tank. Um, you can see they're just overpopulating. Uh, and apparently they've been having a field day just eating all the babies, which is probably good because right now they are breeding at such a rate that, uh, th this tank won't support all of them if, if it continues much longer. I'll definitely need to split this colony and so forth. See these guys here, there, now you get to see them move a bit. But with the females, you can tell the males and females apart in that the males will a lot of times be lighter in color and more vividly colored, so more of an orange yellow against a brown uh, color and with those yellow stripes and then kind of a dark chocolate brown in between that. Sometimes it's kind of a gray. And then the females, you'll actually start to see their rib cage as they start carrying eggs. And you can see up right in here, under bright light, you can see their ovaries, and here you can see her actual eggs. So her ovaries have been full, and now her eggs are down there. And that's just because of the angle of this light. So these guys were discovered to the Western world by Heinrich Kuhl, and he named them Kuliloches because he was a narcissist. No. Uh, because, well, yeah, he may have been, uh, colonial power, uh, German naturalist, may have been a narcissist, but the, the fish has been known as the Kuli loach, uh, K, uh, H O O L I E, the Kuli, like C O O L I E, um, so it's been called a lot of things, but loach is definitely the proper, uh, name for it. Now, I did a little test because I suspected that I've never had Kuli loaches get this big, and I rarely see these guys. They're kind of just off and on my radar, but I suspected that they were eating shrimp. So I threw five shrimp in with them an hour ago uh, and some baby guppies. Baby guppies are fine. The shrimp are gone. So it appears that they love uh, shrimp. That's not a surprise to me. I wasn't worried about that. Um, but buyer beware, they love shrimp. So these Kuli loaches, they're a beautiful animal, and they move just beautifully. Uh, they're easily startled. They really want places to hide. This is just torture for them, so I need to get them out of this little examination cup. Clearly, they've gone to the bathroom, and I tried to give them a little bit of cover and just a little bit of comfort, but they hate that clear uh, bottom. I'm sure that's just driving them nuts. So I'm going to let this boy and girl go downstairs, uh, but I just wanted to show off some of those features of the anatomy, you know? They're really cute, uh, especially when you look at their little face and the really pretty markings they have. And they'll also come to the top and take little uh, gulps of air. So that's very common with Southeast Asian fish that live in muddy um, waters and things like that. Uh, you know, as much as they love streams, they they love hill streams and like a rambling stream with uh, either small gravel or sand. That's what they love. That is going to be where they're at home. Uh, but during monsoon season, sometimes they don't have that luxury. And so during 
monsoon season, they'll come up for gasps of air like that, and they'll um, burrow, and sometimes they'll just wait things out. They can burrow into the mud and take little gulps because um, I'm not sure if they actually are labyrinth fish like gouramis and... Uh, you know, licorice gouramis and some of the other fish that can uh, breathe air uh, just fine uh, without their gills. But they definitely have, like Corydoras, they definitely have some mechanism for gulping and being able to with get more oxygen that way. So kind of interesting little fish. You can see all her eggs here. They're an olive green color. Um, in the body and usually you'd see up in her shoulder here and down her ovaries but right now she's just jam-packed with eggs whereas he is not and he's more of a bright he's kind of got a pink salmon color and orange to him because he was trying to impress her now they're just a fun fish they're not going to bug your other fish really per se um they may eat eggs of other fish and stuff like that but they are a really just kind, uh, gentle little fish that um, I would recommend to any uh, keeper. Now, they do like slightly acidic water. That is, um, it's not a must. You can have neutral water. But they like a pH of around uh, 6.0 6 to uh, 7.0. They can do 7.5 uh, for a while, but really, if you give them, you know, 5.0 to 7.0, that range is way more comforting. Breeding-wise, you're going to get more out of them. Also, another thing between the males and the females is these fins, the males tend to have almost propped themselves up as a little tripod on, on their fins. So you can see that they've he's got those fins like that, whereas she has smaller fins. I'm sorry that there's junk on the... See, she's still got those teeny little fins. But it is interesting to note that their eyes are facing forward, which is typically, like in sharks and other fish, It's a that's a predatory animal evolutionary uh, feature. So kind of interesting to me anyways. Let's get this little guppy uh, or endler out of here, and then we'll move them downstairs... And I will continue to tell you just the last little bits of what you need to know before you have these guys. So, you're going to want to give them lots of hiding spots. Um, hey, one shrimp survived. Uh, you're going to want to give them lots of hiding spots, uh, little caves, um, whatever whatever you can. If you want to buy caves, that's fine. But if you want to make a uh, little little recesses where they can hide, that's probably ideal. Um, they naturally like to hide under the shelf of, like, where, um, in a stream where the the gravel bed would be um, kind of, like, the edge of the river would hang out over and there'd be a gravel bed below. So you could build, like, back in here, I have a shelf with substrate underneath it, and that allows them to kind of quickly burrow in there. Also under logs, in uh, choya wood, stuff like that, that's great. They get along fine with plecos. They, they, I mean, they get along with pretty much everything unless it's really teeny, because look at the size of their mouth. They are a teeny tiny little wiggle worm. Now, my wife thinks that they're kind of creepy. See, there's that shrimp that survived. My wife thinks they're kind of creepy, but um, I just find them fascinating. They're so muscular. You see they're going up to the top for air. Here you can really see that female. You can see her egg, her how stashed she is. You can see those rib cages uh, through that. And they're just a really pretty fish. Discovered in the 18, 1847, I believe, is the expedition which Heinrich uh, Cooley found them. And then you'll want to keep them in pretty warm water because they're, they're found in the Malay Peninsula, Indonesia. And they're not necessarily solitary. They can be, but they like a couple of their own kind around. They're, they don't need uh, they don't need that reassurance uh, like some loaches and things. But they do tend to hang out and like uh, other coolie loaches. At least they'll they'll kind of dogpile in, 
and then they'll uh, split up and go their separate ways. But they're really beautiful fish. There's subtle lighting. You see the olive green on her belly right now. Just really fun. Um, to encourage the breeding, you can also do cold water flushes like I've discussed in How to Breed Corydoras and things like that. Um, this is definitely full size. These ones are ginormous. Now, a lot of people will complain that you don't see them. You know, you have them in this tropical tank where things are 76 to, say, I don't know, 76 to 82 degrees is where they're comfortable. And uh, you want a lot of oxygen, so either you want an air stone or some sort of um, trickle feature uh, or a or a spray bar, or something like that, uh, and that's where they're going to be most comfortable. So I encourage you guys to check them out. If you want them, I got these ones from Aquatic Arts. AquaticArts.com, you can use the code secret SHRIMP, um, or actually, you know what, I think that's an old code. Use the code secret history 15 if it's your first time at checkout, all caps, no spaces, or the code SECRET history 10 if you're a returning subscriber and then some of that money uh that you spend we save that like eight percent and in in the winter we just did a giveaway in july christmas in july we actually give away and this time it was like over a thousand dollars worth of gift certificates and fish uh we we give that back so that's why i work with them amongst other reasons and Aquatic Arts, Arts is just a great uh, company. I really enjoy working with them. So we're going to put these coolies into this tank, which it has some shrimp in it. Um, not too worried about it. There's a lot more hiding areas. And in this back area, there's a lot of uh, elephant stone and siriu stone. There's stuff for them to hide behind, which I think is, is crucial into making them happy. Now, I am curious how I need to feed them because, you know, usually they'll eat anything like flakes and stuff that are just left on the bottom. But um, now that they're accustomed to shrimp that's live, they may be a little more feisty about hunting. Um, they may hunt out the shrimp that are, you know, already in the tank. I'm not sure how that's going to unfold, but... Um, I just wanted to highlight a really awesome fish. Um, you can get, you know, 10, 20 of them, put them in a 20 long, and then get something higher up. They don't make a ton of waste usually. Um, I know for their size, they look like they might poop a good amount, but they don't really seem to. They seem to really have a slower metabolism. They hang out and wait, and then they just kind of uh, come out late, late at night. So if you have wood cats or another fish like that, uh, that, that would be a great pairing. So we're going to let them go now and put them back into their happy place. Um, I just wanted to see if we can see those, those eggs clearer. Yeah. You see that the beautiful fish. Sorry, the container is dirty, but you get the picture. All right. So just a great little fish. I really love these guys. I know I've said that a million times, but, um, if you don't have shrimp in the tank, they probably won't eat anything other than maybe some eggs that other critters have laid. Um, and I think that they're uh, just an interesting feature. If you like snakes or eels, if you wanted, like in salt water, there's a lot of options for eels. And you don't want a big fire eel or something like that, the, the rainbow color and the red and everything. This is a great alternative. Uh, get some of these guys. They come in sometimes as small as like an inch, but they'll grow into this uh, four and a half inch critter here. And I'm going to put them in here, but watch them probably just disappear uh, into whatever. What, see? right there burrowing is already burrowed underneath the substrate so a burrowable a burrowable substrate is also a great thing to have um and that could be this pea gravel or and um and a really coarse sand or fine sand 
Um, I like coarser sand just for the sake of the tank's health and for biological reasons so more bacteria can be on there and water flow. And these guys are going to have lower flow now with this uh, sponge filter, so I might have to put an air stone in. I'm going to watch them and see how they're doing, but they're both now thoroughly hidden. And they went opposite ways, so that kind of shows you their mentality. Uh, feeding them at night shrimp food or algae wafers by Hikari. I really, those seem to be the two that they really uh, go for. So uh, it, maybe it's just because it brings out the shrimp. Who knows? All right, guys. Well, if you followed this long through the video, I hope you gleaned something helpful. And uh, maybe you want to like, subscribe. Uh, you could do both those things at the same time, the magic of the internets. And uh, also, if you're looking for any merchandise like a hoodie with some anatomical drawings of fish, some steampunk drawings of fish, bettas, goldfish, um, corridoras, stuff like that, I'll have a link below. Also, uh, those proceeds go towards uh, any uh, upkeep in this tank uh, and uh, fish room. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Take care of yourselves and your fish, and it will all come back to you in so many different ways. So hang in there, and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye, guys. Cooley Loach is out.